So my name is Isaac. My last name is Liu, L-I-U. And, um, and many people call me Isaac Yun. I say, oh, this is nice. And I uh, want to change my last name, but uh, my real last name is Liu. And, uh, <clears throat> I share maybe a hundred of times my story, but every time if I'm going to share my life story, I pray. So in the, in the hotel room, I spend like a half hour, 45 minutes, I was praying. So God, of course I can do this, but every time if I share the story, Lord, please, touching the heart, and uh, release the calling, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and win the battle in our heart. This is really my prayer also for this afternoon, in this hour. If I'm going to share the story and share the word of God, may the Lord win the battle in our heart and in our soul, in our spirit. Every one of us, we are coming here, life's real, we have our battles. We have also, also our faith battles. Also calling battles. May Jesus always win every battle in our heart. And uh, so I'm 38 years old and married to a Brazilian lady. <laughs> so Pastor Sergio is here and he's the director of our Victory Jerusalem in, uh, in Brazil. Uh, we sit him in uh, April. It was a wonderful time. And uh, uh, I get to know my wife. I, 12 years ago, as I preached in Brazil, and she was my translator. And after, after, the, after the session, I, I told her, uh, you are going to be my wife one day. <laughs> and she was shocked for many, many months. But I was sending, I, I, I was keeping sending uh, you know, money and uh, supporting uh, her uh, uh, ministry trips, sending German chocolates, and some flowers. <laughs> Finally, she said yes. <laughs> and uh, so, so for for the young people, I always say, please don't follow my example. Uh, so if the Lord is really telling you to do this, do it. Otherwise, please don't. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so we have two little. Uh, Girls, one is two and a half, named Elisa, and uh, the, another one is uh, called Hadassah. Uh, it's 10 months. And we have been married for uh, almost 10 years. We prayed, we tried for many, many times to receiving children, but somehow never happened. And uh, before COVID, and um, I, I, was a pre I was preaching a sermon about Abraham and Sarah. My wife was sitting in the first row, and um, I repeat the sentence, next year this time, you are, have, you are going to have a child. And I repeat three times, I was looking at her. And after the church service, we drive back home, I was asking my wife, that sermon was for you. And, uh, and exactly one year later, we received our Elisa. And uh, God is faithful. God is faithful. So my, my first uh, preaching language is German, and uh, the second one is uh, Chinese. And uh, so to speak in English, in fact, I have to. <laughs> so, and, uh, so, thank you. Thank you. So <clears throat> it's from 2014 and 16, and... Uh, uh, I went to Reading, California, uh, for the Bible school for two years. Uh, so that's why I learned some English there, but never went to a school. And, uh, yeah. At the wedding day of my parents, my father got arrested. And um, not at the wedding day of the church, in the church, but in the government. And uh, the policeman come to my, uh, to my mom and said, Miss, Mrs. Liu, please go home. We finally arrested your husband. We were looking for him for many, many years. But at, at your own wedding day, you have to be there. So they 
took my father and put him five years in prison. And uh, my mom visited my father once a month. And she was pregnant, but she lost her, her first child because heavy work on the field. And, um, and the second time my mom got, a, uh, got a pregnant, and uh, in the seventh month, and the policeman come to our house, and they told my mom, we have to abort this baby in two days. The reason for that is the father of this child is a preacher. And they set up an abortion appointment just two days later, and uh, they will pick, pick up my, 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 my mother and, uh, and uh, abort this baby. My mom started to pray, God, you are the gift giver, and this child belongs to you. And uh, this child is going to be a preacher of your gospel. Please don't let this child die. One day before the abortion, I was born at home. And my grandma and, uh, helped a little bit. So I was born with 1.2 kilogram. I think most of us, we, we were a little bit more. And um, with 1.2 kilogram, after I was born, all the, all the ladies from the village, they come to our house, they want to see a Jesus child. As they saw me, they started to mock my family by saying, this is the result of believing Jesus. And this child is going to die because this family is too poor to take care of this child. And my grandma, um, a woman of faith and uh, intercession and prayer, and fighting the spirit, she stood up and she, she started to prophesy, just wait and see. My child is going to have a long life and every day of his life, he will proclaim the word of God. Now, 30 years, 38 years later, I'm doing well. <laughs> Jesus is great. Amen. Amen. So this is the word of God for you and me. And in Psalm 78 said, praise the Lord who daily carry our burdens. And our life belongs only to Jesus. Our life never belongs to someone on this planet, to a government and to some other authorities. Our life belongs only to Jesus. And our Lord said, my father gave them to me and nobody can take them away from my hand because my father is greater than everyone. So I want to speak the word of God into your heart in this moment. Maybe, maybe there's uh, this situation in your life you are fearful. You lost your hope. You lost your, you lost your joy. You lost your confidence in faith. Spirit of God is coming right now on to increase the hope and the joy, and the confident, and so we may hold on to Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid, like my father every time said, don't be afraid, because he is the Lord. Amen. Amen. And um, my, my father always tell me, my son, don't be afraid. If the Lord... Uh, Without the permission of the Lord, nobody can touch you. Without the permission of the Lord, you will never go one day earlier or one day later. And if we finish our work, and the heavenly place will welcome us back home. And don't be afraid about the future, like the old song we always sing. And I know who holds the future in his hand. And we belong to him. This is so precious. We know we belong to the King of Kings and not to this world. And uh, two days later, I received the first letter from my father. And, um, and uh, he wrote, my son, before, do, uh, before you was born, I was in prison. And I preached the gospel. This was the reason. I have one desire for your life. You grow up 
in faith and confident and serving your King Jesus Christ until the very last day of your life. And we will see each other in heaven. This was his letter for me as I was two years old. As I was five years old, I saw my father the very first time. And uh, the very first time, I, I can't remember that, but my mom sometimes told me, the first time as your father released from the prison and he come back home and you were very, very afraid. You tried to hide yourself behind me because there's a, there's, there's a foreigner man come to our house. I, I, I didn't know him. And years later, I still remember my father keep holding me in his arm. He keep telling me, my son, I'm so sorry. I, I am a bad father. But one thing you have to know, you have a perfect father in heaven. And this father, he's 100 million times better, faithful, than every human father you can have. And this heavenly father, he will never forsake you. And he will always carry you through. He's the beginner, he's the finisher of your life and of the holy work he started in you. And may this word also bring hope and bring life in our walk with Christ. And as uh, I was uh, six years old, I still remember one of the elders in my hometown, he, he prayed for me and he said, I anointed you as a man over five. You know, in the Old Testament, there was man over 10, over 50, over 100. Because as I was a, a six years old child, I already led five of my friends to Christ. So that's why he prayed over me. I, I anointed you as a man over, uh, over five. I grew up with my grandma because my, uh, my father was always gone. He was in prison and he had to hide himself. And my mom uh, preached also a lot. I grew up with my grandma with daily prayer meeting in different houses and uh, villages. <clears throat> so just you know, all the men in my hometown, also the, the, the believers in the church, everyone who can read, who can write, who can teach or speak a little bit about the word of God, were all in prison. They were all in prison. So in the church, there were only women and children and the very, very old people. And I grew up with them. And uh, I grew up without the Bible. I grew up without a lot of teaching. My grandma always uh, preached the same, uh, same, same sermon to us. And uh, I think over 20 or 30 years, she was always uh, preaching the same sermon. Every time she started preaching, you will know this is a sermon. She will say, if you have any challenges and problems in your life, go down on your knee and cry out the name of Jesus. This was her sermon. So you need anointing to keep the same sermon for 20 years <laughs> and the people are still sitting in the church and don't left the church. And um, So I grew up with, without Bible and without uh, and with really a little bit teaching of the gospel, but and we prayed every night, and um, uh, my grandma memorized a lot of a uh, lot of Bible, and uh, let me show you a story. My father, so in the whole region of my hometown, and we 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 didn't have one single Bible. Mostly we have some handwriting Bible about the book of Acts. My father tell me, my son, you have to value the word of God. You have, you have write down the word of God on your heart. The demon is coming, and the government is coming, try to take everything away from you. But make sure you have something in your life no one can take away. And this will stay with you from eternity to eternity. And this is the only word of God. My father said, as I was, I was young, every time if, if a, 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 a missionary or preacher come to my, our place, this missionary have to preach day and night, 
But sometimes this preacher need a nap or they need a, need a time to sleep. And in this time, I will borrow his pen. We didn't have paper in my hometown at that time. We were very, very poor. I will borrow his pen and borrow his Bible and uh, searching for important Bible verse to write down on my skin. Strongly write down the Bible verse on my skin. And I will memorizing, memorizing until this word of God and uh, was rolled down on my heart. After that, I will take a shower. <laughs> so, so I grew up with everyday prayer meetings in different places. And I think I can, I can write a book about how to sleep in the church. <laughs> because in China, we don't have church building like this. Mostly there's a, uh, there's a living room and uh, there's, two, uh, there's two bathroom. Very, very classy uh, Chinese house. So mostly the preacher or, or the one who leaving the service is in the living room. And the children and the old people, uh, uh, they, were, they have to sit in the, in the, in the bedroom. So I grew up in the church. Um, mostly, I, I only hear the sermon or the only hear the, 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 the songs. I, uh, the most of the time, I never saw uh, the, the one who, who was speaking. So uh, as I was a child, I slept a lot in the church. And, uh, but somehow, the anointing of prayer and the anointing of the fear of God stay in the heart. And um, as I was seven years old, I told my, my grandma, Grandma, I won't also come to the table of the Lord and take the communion. My grandma says, you have to become a follower of Christ. Then you allowed to, to have the fellowship. And I, I tell my grandma, yes, I'm willing to. As you remember the night, the, it was the middle of the night, it was winter, and uh, around 20 of us, and we, we were prepared for, for baptism, and was standing in the freezing cold water in the neighbor village in the river, and the three of the elders was, was standing, surrounded me. One was asking me, my son, are you sure you won't follow Christ? I mean, I was seven years old. Ask a, ask a seven years old child about this deep question. And, um, we, and uh, he keep asking me, my son, you don't have to follow Christ because your father is a preacher. Because your grandma is, is the a woman of God. You have to make your own decision. Of course, I said, yes, without understanding the weight of my answer to this question. And now, 31 years later, I even stronger, confident, joyful, and daily, I say, yes, Lord, I will follow you. I will follow you. Yeah. Amen. Well, my father always says, it's not about uh, believing in something. It's about to uh, follow the one who is the true king in the heaven and on the earth. As I was nine years old, my father gave me the first Bible. But uh, with, uh, 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 if you receive a Bible, you have the responsibility. The without a Bible, you, uh, uh, I was without the responsibility. And my father gave me the Bible. He said, now you have a job to do. There's a calling following the Bible. From today on, you have to memorize the Bible one day, one chapter. I was eight years old. Almost one, but eight, nine. So I choose the shortest chapter in the Bible. <laughs> one by one. But the Bible, you can't, you can't add new chapters, short chapters into the Bible. And after a while, I have to start with the middle long and the long uh, chapters. So as a child, I hated to memorize the word of God because every time, if I can't memorize one day one chapter, my father will say, go to the corner or kneel down and uh, pray to Jesus until you finish that chapter. 
So my father today, he's so nice. He's really <laughs> joyful. He's really joyful and laughing. But he, as he was young, and he, uh, uh, the, the Lord had have to, have to work on his heart and his character <laughs> a lot. And now he's uh, become, you know, more Christ-like. <laughs> and uh, so I like my father today. I mean, as a child, I, I also lo I really loved him. And, uh, and, uh, but today I love him and I like him also. <laughs> so my, this was the Chinese way to raise up the next generation of preachers, of men and women of God. St until today, my father will have a daily Zoom meeting with uh, his, uh, uh, you know, his friends and disciples. And uh, he's still and, uh, wanting his disciples to memorize the word. And you know, some, some verses, some chapters. And, um, <clears throat> I won't give this word. Maybe some of us, we need to hear this. How can a young man or a young woman, how can a man and woman of God work strictly in his life? He holds on to the word of God. In Psalm 119, see this. How we can live a godly life, a joyful life, always keep going from glory to glory. There's only one secret. We hold on to the word of God. As I was um, 11 years old, I always, uh, my father, from time to time, he took me to to the prayer meeting, to the leader meeting, to the training meeting. And, he, and as I was 11 years old, he took me to the mountain area and uh, for one week intensive uh, pastor training. And uh, in that mountain area, and people was praying for me, and I started to speak in tongue. And I saw visions, how fire come down upon my life. And uh, one day later, my father said, my son, you are ready to preach the gospel. This was not a question, this was a comment. <laughs> so one day later, and he sent me to the mission trip to go to the mountain area. I still remember I have to work six to eight hours as, a, as a 11 years old and uh, to preach in different villages. And, um, and in, village, in one village, as I was arrived there, there was uh, 60 farmers. They were already waiting for me. And one of the elders come to me and said, my son, your father is a great man of God. And we are so happy that you are here. Oh, and and uh, yeah, with 11 years old, and uh, I have to, I have to preach the word of God. I, I think this is good, so. This is good, so. And uh, I start to preach the word of God and to memorize the word of God. Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, Jacob to his brothers. And many times I preached the gospel, but I never understood what I was preaching. But uh, important for me is if my father was asking, I can answer him, I was preach. I preached, and he was happy with me. But, but even that, serving and preaching, we, without the unwillingness, but God started working in my heart and trained me to become his disciple. As I was 12 years old, my father got arrested again. And this happened again and again and again in his life. He go to preach and got arrested, put in prison for three to five years. And after that, where he will go? He go to the church and he preached again. And the policeman come again, arrested him, put him in prison. And after a few years, he got released. And where is, he, where is he going? To the house of the Lord and preach again. God loves heart like this. Again, again, again. Preach the gospel, loving on God, day by day, year by year, until the very last breath we have on this earth. And uh, I was 12, he got arrested again, and my mother also 
was arrested, put in prison. And I was 12, my sister was six years old. And we lived on the street for six to eight months. And I was looking, I was looking food for my sister. And um, my sister was keep asking, keep asking me, brother, when will our parents come back home? In the first few days, I always ask, I, 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 was, I always answer my sister, oh, tomorrow they will come back. You know, like in China, you always say, oh, tomorrow they will come back. And after a while, and uh, I start to hating God. Because my sister said, no, they are not uh, coming back home. Where is our parents? I start to question God. So God, I hate you. God, I misunderstand you. I have, I have no understanding to what you're doing with my family. I start to have desire for a normal life, become uh, having a normal father like, an, like the, uh, the, the neighborhood. And uh, from, 11, from 12 years old until I was 20 years old, it was a very, very hard season for me. I always pray the same prayer, God, I don't want to become a preacher. Sometimes my mom pray, pray also this prayer, God, you can do everything with my son. Please don't let him become a preacher. You know, my mom was praying for a child, and God gave, him a, gave her a child. And she, she, she prayed, God, make my son to a preacher, to a man of God. And years later, she prayed a different prayer. My father was in prison. And of course, it was very, very hard for him. And, but he still had fellowship with a, with a prisoner who come to Christ. But my mom, 15 years, 20 years, she was alone at home, facing loneliness, facing bad words from the, from the neighbors, and even sometimes from the church members. So don't forget, please don't forget the, the, the woman and, uh, of the persecuted church. Mostly we, you know, we, we, we are looking up to the man and I said, oh, this is a faith in hero. They go through so many difficulties. But my mom is even a greater hero in faith. Let, please let us also take care of them, pray for them, and support them. So may they still have the sweetness and the soft heart and the closeness to God. And... Um, yeah, a few months later, my parents found us on the street and took us back home. And uh, I went to school for 10 years. I changed 11 schools in China. And um, as I was uh, 14, 15 years old, we, we moved to, or we flee to Burma, the Myanmar, you know the, you know the country. And we lived there for two years. And uh, two years later, we have to flee again from uh, Burma to Thailand. And... Um, facing a lot of uh, difficulties. My sister and my, my mom was uh, walking through the mountains without shoes. Yeah, even today you can see the ones on, uh, on their feet. And, uh, and uh, many times I was asking my sister, are you hating God? And my sister say, um, in the beginning I was hating God like you, but today I'm loving the Lord. Praise God. This is grace. Either the persecution make our heart hot and bitter and uh, go far away from God, or the persecution or the difficulties will bring us, kick us more closely to God. May the second option happen in our life. This is only grace. Let's also pray grace come upon our life. So we may our heart become sweeter, softer, closer to our Jesus. Amen. And uh, please just tell me when I have to stop. Yeah, I grow up in China, so I can stop anytime. <laughs> or I can keep going. And, um, um, <clears throat> so my wife is not here, so that's why I'm, I'm asking you. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm very, very thankful for the mission worker back to Jerusalem. And this is my family. It's nothing to do with the ministry. It's nothing to do for me uh, uh, or for a job or something like this. This is my family. And, uh, and for the rest of my life, I always tell my father, Father, everything I, what I'm learning in Germany and also in Europe, everything what I'm learning is for the purpose for the Back to Jerusalem missionaries. May, I, may one day I become a blessing. Maybe um, I have the honor or the chance also to teach them or to show them something to make their ministry a little bit easier. And um, with 17, 17 and a half, almost 18 years, and uh, God led us uh, from uh, Thailand uh, to Germany. And I come to Germany with my one Bible, uh, one pants, and uh, one jacket. This was everything what I brought from, from Asia to Europe. And I still remember the very first night we arrived in Frankfurt, Germany, where we still live in Frankfurt, Germany. I have a church there called All Nations Church, Frankfurt. And uh, I still remember the very first night we arrived in, in, in Frankfurt, Germany, and uh, um, uh, the friends there received us and gave us a one-room apartment. As soon as we arrived in that apartment, we kneeled down on the knee without my father because he was in the prison in Burma. And uh, my mom said, please pray after me. Thank you, Jesus, for brought us from China, from Asia to Germany. We are here with only one goal or one purpose, to pay back the interest of the gospel to this continent. Still today, every week, we are still pray the same prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you. We are here with only one goal, one purpose, to pay back the interest of the gospel for this continent. I once, and um, my family come to Christ through the missionary from Norwegian, from the missionary from Europe. And, uh, and even today we are here in the United States. We want to pay back the interest of the gospel. Your forefathers, your friends, your families, you know many of them. They come to the mission field. They pay a high price. So my people may, be, may come to Christ. Many of the missionaries you sent to my people, they were killed, they were buried. They translated the Bible in, the, in, the, in their whole life. And many of the missionaries, they worked the ministry, they prayed, but they never received, they saw a one come to Christ. But after they died, they buried in the country thousands and millions of people and come to Christ. So today, I really want to say thank you for all your prayer, for all your support, and for all your, your, your love for the missionaries and, uh, and uh, for sending them to the nations and the preaching the gospel. And um, I, I will I finish, my, um, I won't finish my, my testimony by preach a little bit. I, I was in the hotel room, was asking God, God, I don't want only share testimony. I want to receive a word, word for this hour. And um, I come to Germany as an 18-year-old boy. And uh, one week later, I already start to preach in Germany. And in the last 20 years, I preached maybe six to 100 churches in Germany, from Catholics to, to Mennonites to Pentecost to big and small churches. And in the first five years, friends still tell me, Isaac, everything what you preach, we never understood. But we prayed together. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, I, and God is looking for people. God is looking for men and women of God. They never look what they have, but always look up to Christ and give their little life into the big hand of Christ. If, if God can use my father and farmer's son, 
with the three years he went to the school. I think he can, he can also use me and use you. And um, at the end of this speech, I really want to pray with us. I, I believe strongly God is going to release calling in this hour to many. God brought you to this nation. Of course, living a good life is good. Having a big car is good. Having a big house is also, is also wonderful. But the higher calling is we may put our life as living, as pure, as holy sacrifice to our God. So he may use us to bring many, many fruits that last uh, in, in, in the eternity. And then in the last book of Moses, in chapter 6, in verse 13, he said, Fear the Lord your God, serve him only. Friends, this is the word of God for you. You come here, maybe you, you come here. Uh, of course, we won't, we won't hear the voice of the persecuted church. But I think many of us, we are dreaming, we are asking God, God, give me a word for my coming years. I want to receive a word as a, as a, as a direction for my, for my ministry. And this is a word of God for you. Fear the Lord your God. Serve him only. And the Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, my father spoke this morning. We know the story very well. And Isaiah got Then I heard a voice in the chapter 6, verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and whom will go for us? We feel very honored if we send by a big mission organization or company to do something. But the King of kings, the Lord of lords, Everything belongs to him. All the gold, all the silver, all the anointing, all the authority. And this one cried out, Whom shall we send? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And the Isaiah said, Here I am, send me. But Isaiah said always, also, I live among a people with unclean lips. I live in a country godless. Maybe many of us, this is our desire. This is our cry to God. God, this country is lost. This continent is lost. This world is going dark and dark. But in the dark situation, God is calling us. God is re releasing calling this afternoon, whom shall I send? Who is willing to go for us? Here am I. Send me, Lord. And the, the calling of the Lord and our life planning should become one. The Lord is asking you, make your life planning according to the word of God. Apostle Paul says, said, let's and uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say this in English. I think in German. And um, they say, let's build everything according to the word, to the word of God. Maybe you have your life planning, your marriage planning, your family planning, your career planning. After your own dreams, your, your own desire, God is asking you, to bring all your heart, all your planning, all your dreams, all your ministry dreams back to his word. Align under his authority. Here I am. Here is my plan. Here is my dreams to serve your purpose only. May the Lord win the battle this afternoon. Some books later in Isaiah, 
in Jeremiah chapter 1. In Jeremiah chapter 1. And the sovereign, sovereign Lord said, No, Isaiah said, Oh Lord, I don't know how to speak in the sixth verse. I am only a child. I don't know how to speak. I am an only child. As you remember, I was, um, I was 19 years old. My, my brain is like a, a Chinese rice soup. I, I speak Chinese. I speak five different uh, dialects. I learned the language of Lisu, of Kachin, of Burmese. And uh, I try to uh, learn uh, Hebrew and Greek in the Bible school. And at the same time, I have to learn German. All my head like, was really like a Chinese rice soup. It's, so uh, as I was 18, 19, 20, 21, I can talk in one, in, in one language. So I was always so confused in all the languages. I still remember I was 19, I was invited to preach the hometown of Hitler in Braunau. It's a little country. And uh, this was a Norwegian pastor. He planted a church in the basement with around 15, 18 people. He asked me, I said, come and preach. And I preached. I, I didn't know if someone uh, uh, catched my, my sermon. But afterwards, I said, let's pray together. A 16 years old um, a, a girl come to the front named Magdalena Kraft. And I pray over her. She was 16, I was 19. I think 15 years later, in, in, a, in, in America, in a German student gathering, suddenly someone tapped on my shoulder. I look around, and there was a lady. She said, Isaac, do you know who I am? I said, I don't know. And she said, my name is Magdalena Kraft. And uh, as and, and I was 16 years old, it's about 15 years ago, you, pray, you preached, I didn't catch, uh, catch your sermon, but you preached the fire of God come into my life. And I give my life to Christ. I went to the Bible school, and uh, I am a missionary in Germany, in the, one of the most hardest city and to planting different churches. Hallelujah. And here, Jeremiah said, said, I do not know how to speak. I do not know how to speak. I am an only child. I am only an old man, old lady. I am only a foreigner in this country. I never went to the Bible school. We have millions of excuses. But the Lord said to me, Do not see, I am only a child. You must go to everyone I sent you to. You go to everyone I sent you to. And see whatever I commanded you. So you don't, have, you don't need your own plan. I have a plan for you. You don't, don't, you don't, you, you don't have to make, make trouble with yourself what to see. I will put my word into your mouth. And I will, rescue, I will protect you, declare the Lord. May the Lord win the battle. Maybe in this moment you are still fighting with God. I am a child. I don't know how to speak. I never try a uh, traveler overseas. God is looking on this earth. He's looking for man and woman who's willing to say yes to him. Like our precious sister said, God is going to give you the nations as your inheritance. Their cities, the people groups, the villages, the churches, the broken hearted, the lost people are waiting for your coming with the love of Christ. Of course, there are many people, but God is calling you this afternoon. We know Jonah or Jonah. God called him to a very, a very bad city. 
the city, they're, they're, they're giving, giving their gods, like a children, as a sacrifice. A really, really a bad nation, a bad city. God called Jonah to go there. But Jonah said, no, I'm not going. They deserve the punishment of God. But finally, God won the battle. And Jonah went there. And he only preached one sermon. Forty days from now, God will destroy this city. Really, without any anointing. Without any preparation. Just the same sentence. Fourteen days from now, God will destroy the city. Every day, one time, and he will go back to his hotel. <laughs> and, dear brothers and sisters, standing before you, I can really see this. God never need your beautiful speech. God never need your wonderful sermon. God only need, and God only need your obedience. And he need, uh, you need him in your speech. Doesn't matter it's long or short. A little bit beautiful or, or a little bit not beautiful. You need God in your sermon. You need God in your ministry. And this is everything what you need. A terrible sermon, but a huge blessing. It's nothing to do with us. At the end, the last Bible verse I won't read, in the last book of in the last book of the Old Testament. Chapter three, Malayahi, chapter three, first verse fifteen. The prophet Malachi was to compare himself to the godless people. And he basically, look God, the people who are godless, they are doing better than us. I give everything to serve you, but somehow my neighbor, they never believe Jesus. They never, they never follow Christ, but somehow they are doing better. This is the hour God has re re released calling in our life. May our heart this moment pull down our, uh, our uh, don't compare yourself to others. Don't compare yourself to others. Then one first later, God says, there's a book and when the, when the people who have feared God talk with each other, the Lord will listen and hear. A book of remembrance was written in his presence. Amen? Let's give our life to Christ. And if the Lord this afternoon is calling you to become a missionary, to become a servant, to become a minister, to become, to, uh, be, you know, to become a follower of Christ, you know, to, and uh, we really want to pray with you. And uh, this is our confidence to know there's a book of remembrance in the presence of God. Everything what we are doing for God, with God, will never go lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, I hope this was not too long. And I want, so I, I want, I want to pray with us together. Many of us, we already forgot the calling of God in our life. Maybe the time we were young and God called us, but we denied his calling. We continue our real life. When we have so many sorrows. We have to finish the reality of life. We have no time for the ministry. We have no time for God himself. We have no time for the mission work. And God is releasing this afternoon calling. Maybe become a pastor. Maybe become a minister. Maybe become a missionary. Maybe become an intercessor for mission work. Maybe become 
and like pick up the the promise of God, the calling of God in your life many, many years ago. Maybe you already forgot it, the calling of God in your life, but God is still remember. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, I won't really ask everyone who, who already let the law win the battle in your soul, in your spirit, and said, I am here. I won't go everywhere when the, where the Lord won't send me to go. And I won't, use, I won't be used by the Lord in the rest of my life. From today on, I don't want uh, searching for excuses anymore to not serving the Lord. From today on, I'm ready to serve the Lord. And, uh, and um, then you may, be, uh, you may uh, stand up and we won't pray with you. If you are not ready, please don't stand up. And uh, you still have time to talk, to fight a battle of the good faith. And, uh, but everyone who is willing to be used by the Lord, we will stand up and we will pray.